Hi everyone, my name is Bianca Ordonez. I'm HIV positive and this is my story. I want to start off in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this beautiful and perfect day that you have given us all. I pray that you help me spread your message of forgiveness and repentance, that you can make everything broken whole. May you touch the hearts of everyone that's watching this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Where to begin? I guess on the night that I met the guy that infected, I was on a date with this guy and his girlfriend i got really drunk he got really mad by the time Whoa, that wait, we ooh. parted wait who we starting off early um what do you mean by that what do you mean you was on a date with a guy and his girlfriend i hope you expound on this further because that hmm huh. <laughs> that right there already shows me that you was living on the wild side pineapples pineapples Days, I was extremely, extremely drunk. Now, if you've seen the other videos, I go into detail about what happened on the date. It's really embarrassing, so I don't like to repeat it. Just go back to the video. That night was just like a culmination of all the bad decisions I've made. Let's recap. I'm on a date. The date goes bad. He does not want to see me for the rest of his life. So I'm not with the date anymore. I'm in the streets by myself, walking aimlessly because... I was drunk and so I run into a group of people and knowing myself I probably said something very disrespectful and out of pocket because that's how I behaved when I was drunk which is why I don't drink anymore it's gonna be a year in September since I had alcohol so glory to God for that Congratulations. I walk away from the people I noticed someone following me and not only is he following me but he's recording me on his phone so I immediately feel very defensive and I feel unsafe Woo! Okay. I sense that someone's following me. He crosses the street to get closer to me, and he has a phone in hand and puts it right in my face. I knock the phone from his hand. It falls onto the floor. He curses me out and then puts it even closer. So at that point, I feel extremely violated and I'm belligerent. I have a history of, of trauma with men, sexual trauma with men, childhood sexual trauma. And so these are things that I carried with me. And unfortunately, if you if you know, you know, being part of a Hispanic and minority family, you don't talk about your traumas. I, I think it's sad that so many of my adult friends have stories of being sexually abused by family members. Last month, one of the guys that I play basketball with told me that his babysitter raped him. His male babysitter raped him when he was like 10. Think about that. Mm. Couldn't go to therapy because we didn't go to therapy. That was specifically for other people. There was a lot of trauma that I was living with that I was carrying inside of my body because your body literally stores trauma. That's what I mean by nice. a culmination of all the pain. That's he nice. has this phone in my face and it triggers something in me and I spit on him. I literally got the biggest loogie that I could find in the from the back of my throat. And I spit on him. And once I spit on him, he punches me in the face, knocks me out cold. I don't remember anything for a while. The first thing that I remember when I come to is I'm crying. I am hysterical. And I hear someone's voice asking me, yo, are you okay? Are you good, ma? Are you okay? My eye is like so swollen. I'm recording on my phone, right? So I was like, oh, you want to record on your phone? I'm gonna record on my phone. This person who asked me if I was okay is obviously not the same person who knocked me out. So the person who was asking me if I was okay ended up being the person who infected me. He picks me up Wait, what? and takes initiative on trying to get me home. He escorts me to his car. People are also in the car. During the time that he is taking everyone else home, and people in the car are like, yo, leave her on the side of the road. I was probably still being belligerent, but I'm still a human being. So at this point, he's asking me for an address, but I'm not giving it to him because I'm drunk. Instead of taking me to like a police station, hospital, etc., he's like, you know what? I'm gonna take you to my place. He takes me to his place. I remember walking into his place, but that's the only thing I remember. The next morning, I woke up in such a daze that I wasn't even sure if I was alive. And then I realized that I couldn't open my eye, and that's when I started crying. I am facing the wall, so I don't know who's behind me. Once I start crying, he wakes up or he's been awake, and he's like, come over here. Like, I don't remember this person at all. I don't remember what this person looked like. And I was so, so scared to turn around and be appalled by what I saw, right? I turn around and it's him. I'm like, could have been worse. This is the ignorance, right? This is behind HIV. 
because this guy was literally dying from his untreated HIV, potentially AIDS diagnosis. I thought he was cute. It's so ignorant. Please, I'm begging you. If there's anything that you can take away from this video is that HIV does not have a look. You can mm. be sleeping with someone who is literally counting their days. Yo. When they used to come visit us to talk about HIV and AIDS, that was one of the first things that they told us. They stressed that, that you cannot look at somebody and tell if they're sick. AIDS don't pick and choose its victims. To add some more to the whole thing, you could have been sold into sex trafficking. And a random stranger picking you up, being able to take you to his house. I'm sad that you caught HIV, but at the same time, you could have been on a ship headed to Bangkok right now. I start questioning him, did we have intercourse he basically lied to me and told me that we didn't have intercourse but i'm like i'm naked you're naked i think we had intercourse and i think at that point he was just really scared that i was going to say that he like assaulted me <sighs> but he did. which i do believe that he did please he do not did. have intercourse with someone who is drunk especially if you yourself or not especially in the state that i was in because i wasn't tipsy yeah. i was far beyond that point he eventually drops me off at home. We go our separate ways, but he's persistent about being in my life. He calls me, checks up on me. He embarked on this relationship, right? Relationship. And the only one that ends up being in a relationship is me. He is still doing whatever he pleases. He knows how to set his boundaries so well. He knows how to keep his many different lives separated. And he remembers all of his lies. So we were together for seven or eight months total. It's hard to describe what I felt because I'm not sure what parts of it were real and what parts of it were manipulation. I did need therapy after our relationship, not just because of the HIV. Actually, I didn't receive any therapy for the HIV, but it was mainly because of the gaslighting that I received. I wasn't really sure about what was real and what wasn't real. During that time is when I acquired HIV. I can't say that I acquired HIV the same night that I met him. I will say though, I started getting symptoms three weeks after the night that I met him. His yeah. viral load was very, very high. The higher your viral load, the easier it is to infect. I was sick for about another three weeks. During that time, he was very much like, you can't give me what you have, don't worry, I can't get sick, I just wanna take care of you. It's really hard when you're with a narcissist. It's really hard to differentiate like what you should have done versus what you feel like you're able to do. Mm. You become them, essentially, and mm. you start thinking like them, you start That's thinking deep. for them, like, oh, what would they want me to do? I ended up getting tested five months after we met. The reason why I ended up going to the doctor is because even though I wasn't symptomatic anymore, like, there were two symptoms that persisted. One of them being consistent, unending yeast infection. So I would take clindamycin like maybe once a week. I would be good for a couple of days and then the yeast infection would come back. Discovered that I had thrush, which is kind of like a consistent yeast infection. I'm not saying that everyone that suffers from thrush has HIV, but I'm saying like that was a symptom that I experienced. And then the second thing that was very odd to me was that it was so painful to have intercourse. Actually, he experienced the same thing too. During this time, he was very unwell, but I didn't know what it was. Yo. I did not know about the yeast infection thing. See what I'm saying? Even as an adult, I need to re-educate myself on HIV and AIDS. The one thing I know is transmitted through bodily fluid. One of the symptoms I do remember was just having a cold. You're just going to have a cold that seems like it just doesn't want to go away. And it's easy for you to get sick. The yeast infection, that's something new. I actually just learned something. Was. And I realized that I was in a lot of pain and that the clindamycin wasn't curing my yeast infection. I was like, okay... I don't have insurance, so I'm not going to go to the doctor, but I could go to the clinic and explain to them what's going on since it's down there. Maybe they have an answer or they can refer me to someone else that can give me an answer. Mind you, I got tested the day before I met him. The entire panel came out negative. The night before I went to the clinic, I had this like gut-wrenching feeling that I was going to get very bad news. I wasn't expecting it to be HIV. I was expecting it to be something else that could be cured with a shot. And if you haven't gotten tested this year, honey, it is June. Please go get tested. Only thing that they can give a result for the day of is an HIV test. Go back to the waiting area, and after your HIV results come back negative, you're free to go. So I'm sitting down in the waiting area, waiting for them to tell me, like, okay, you know, you're free to go. 
But instead, they call my number up. I find out that I am HIV positive. My Damn, world obviously shattered into a million pieces. They told me, like, not to worry, that there's a possibility that it could be a false positive. But I knew for a fact that there was no way that I wasn't positive, especially when I started thinking about the symptoms that I had when I first got infected. This is the reason why I was so sick. Like, I was just waiting for God to take me. That's how horrible and painful and confusing and scary that time was because no one was giving me answers as to why i was so sick so when they the scariest results i had to wait for was me thinking that i had cancer last year the lymph nodes on my neck just swole up so this lymph node swole up it was another one swollen right here it was another one swollen right here. You know, you get on Google and you just start Googling shit, bro. And Google do not make it any better. Because once they see those type of symptoms, it goes to the, the worst thing you could possibly think of. So I'm at work, well, I'm thinking, I'm man, I might have cancer. <sighs> I'm about to die. I'm, bro, I'm scared. I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm scared. I go to the doctor, she felt it. She's like, oh, it's swollen, but it's not that big. You know, usually they're about this big. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm all right. I go back on Google and they said, if multiple lymph nodes are swollen, you should be worried. So I'm like, man, this bitch don't know what she's talking about. I go back to another doctor, get a second opinion. Now he scared the hell out of me. There's some Asian guy, dude looked at it. He's like, I'm gonna schedule you a um and uh what what they did was it a, it wasn't an X-ray it was a a CAT scan he sent me to get the scan so they scanned the lymph nodes although they were swollen they were benign they were able to tell that they were benign with the scan so you know that's what we going with I mean the the lymph my lymph nodes have went down since those are the scariest results I've ever waited for it finally told me that I had tested positive for HIV I was like well that makes perfect sense so I told him the day that I found out I thought he was gonna be shocked I thought he was gonna be scared I thought he was going to be mad and he was none of those things no nah, because he already he was knew. neither surprised he knew shocked, what was going on scared nor mad he just said oh, okay like as if I didn't say what I just said. He didn't want to talk about it. Our biggest fights were when I was trying to get him to go to the doctor because that's all I wanted for him was to get help. And I never accused him of giving me HIV. I never said, you gave me HIV. I was never mad at him because what was done was done. At this point, I was just like, are you going to get help? He obviously didn't, if you guys know. And that was the choice that he wanted to make for that himself. That was my next question. The only thing alive. that makes me sad about that is that he also kind of made that choice for other people didn't have to do what he did to me and to the other women you know please get tested if you haven't already and just trust god get into your word i'm not here to point my fingers at you but i will say that sex outside of marriage is immoral oftentimes we end up paying the price for that it might not look like hiv it might look like a heartbreak it may look like a child that you weren't prepared for it might look like chlamydia. At the end of the day, it's just better to do things God's way. Love you guys. Bye. It's been such a long time since I've sat down and listened to a story time. Shout out to you, man. You know, because even though you are HIV positive, the positivity and the strength it takes to just come out and talk the way you talk and I can tell that, you know, you've changed your life around. So, again, <laughs> congratulations to you. As far as homie that gave you HIV, now I don't wish death on anybody. And it seems as though he might have already passed. I personally feel as though it's for the best. Anybody who willingly infect other people with a deadly virus don't belong here. If I know the Bible preached forgive, and I know you've changed your life, man, and I know that you probably have already forgiven that man. And that's cool for you, that's good for you. But I ain't forgiving his ass, you know what I'm saying? I'm not forgiving him. Because he's gone, you're still here, but I'm pretty sure you don't know all the people who he has infected. So some of those people might have already been gone as well because of his selfish decision.